Hi, my name is Michelle Monroe and I am the Spire Coordinator from the Hermiston High School. I am going into my seventh year as being the Spire Coordinator and I'm going to talk a little bit um, about working with students and how the Aspire mentors in Hermiston work with students of all ages. So we start working with students from 9th grade to 12th grade. So the Hermiston High School, we work with students of all grades. Um, we're able to work with the 9th graders through the 12th grade, starting with the um, younger students, the ninth graders is a great way to build the program um, and give them the tools they need to be successful come their senior year of high school. We have specific things that we do with each one of the um, grade levels that build on each other until you get up to your senior year. So I'm going to go through some of the activities that um, with the mentor's help have we have developed um, that we believe works best with our students. When we begin working with our ninth grade students, I first start by going into their success class. Uh, all ninth graders, either first semester or second semester, take a success class which talks about careers and career interests they have. So I go into those classes a couple times during each semester and get to know the students so they can uh, visually see who I am and uh, know where I'm locating, come visit me. So when they meet with their mentor for the first time, it's pretty much the basis getting to know you between the mentor and the student, um, asking them questions about what, what activities or hobbies do they like to do inside school and outside school. We also ask them where their parents work. Um, that way we can look back on it come their junior, senior year and see if uh, the places that are their parents work maybe give out scholarships. We also ask them where they're born. That'll help us decide um, if what financial aid form they need to figure to fill out kind of the first steps on determining um, what kind of financial aid they're available come their senior year. And we talk to them really about volunteering and why it's important to volunteer in your community um, and give them some ideas of places they could volunteer based on their interests and then talk to them about attendance and how important it coming to school is. Um, and then, you know, anything they want to talk about with the mentor, you, they're usually pretty shy at this point. So um, just getting some basic information from them and let them know that we are here for them to help them. We usually meet with the ninth graders twice during the year. So we'll do the initial meeting with the ninth grader and then we'll pull them back in before the end of the school year just to see how their, their year ended up going. Um, maybe they had a change in classes that they liked, maybe they tried a club or a sport or they tried some volunteering. So we like to, you know, do a catch up like what, um, what have you done this, this year, your freshman year, and uh, maybe what are you going to do this summer? So give them some ideas on how they can keep continuing to look at those different career interests they have during the summertime. When we meet with our 10th graders, hopefully we've had a meeting with them in 9th grade. If not, then we're going to start with the basics again, getting to know you a little bit about your family um, and about them as a, a student, like how did their 9th grade year go. Um, we're going to keep the connection between the mentors together for that. It's going to dive a little bit more into careers. So they researched a career their sophomore, their I'm sorry, their freshman year. So we want to turn back their 10th grade year and say, hey, you know, are you still interested in that same career? Um, and maybe look at more instead of a specific career, maybe look at a field that they're interested in and give them more ideas of things they can do in that field. Really uh, talking about your activities chart, getting them started on an activities chart and why it's important to keep track of those activities. And then students come their junior and senior year, they can do internships and job shadows. So um, towards the end of their 10th grade, we'll let them know, you know, who they need to contact for the internship, um, how that works, and then set them um, to meet with the person in charge of the internship. So the meetings with the 10th graders, um, probably three or four times a year. 
um, just kind of touching base a couple times every, you know, once every couple months, three months, then we're touching base with them, um, keeping them connected with this fire program, advertising um, college visits that we go on. We also go on the Northwest Career Expo in March. So really encouraging them to come on those visits with us. And that's the same with, with the freshmen and too. All of the students um, are invited, as long as they're passing their classes, to come on the visits that Aspire takes with students. So now students are in the 11th grade and we're going to focus on doing a career workshop with them. So they can either do this career workshop individually or they can do it in a group. Um, it's a workshop we have attached to the fall conference and how it works is students will do a personality quiz and then come up with three career fields that they're interested in researching and then they'll come up with careers within those fields that they would like to research. So as, um, as they research it, they're going to look at what kind of education do they need in that field, in that career that they want to do, where can they go to get the education, the certificate, the associate's, bachelor's, master's degree on up, whatever they need for that. And by the end of the, um, the career workshop, there's a place where they will uh, write down three schools. If it's school related, if they need post-secondary education for their career, then where can they go to get that along with when is the application due, when is the scholarship due for that school. So it really has them coming into fall of their senior year with three schools that they are going to apply for. We'll also talk about the GPA um, and where is their GPA, where does it need to be in order to um, go to the university possibly that they want to go to. Um, and really talking about why that's important to keep the GPA up. Continuing on with the college visits um, so that they can step foot onto campuses to see what they like or they, they don't like. And really hitting them with the volunteering and volunteering um, in a career that you may be interested in is a great way to explore that career. So giving them some more ideas about um, volunteering, uh, job shadows, internships, we talk about all of that and then give them the tools that they need to, to set up those appointments with the people that they need to do that with. Hopefully come their 12th grade year, they are more set on a field that they want to go into so we can do some more research on that field they're interested in and bringing in speakers to talk to students or groups of students who are interested in the same field so they can talk to someone who's actually doing that career right now and will help them um, probably make some decisions on what they need to be doing for their next steps. We also look at the financial portion of it, um, encouraging all students to fill out the FAFSA or the ORSA, um, applying for the Oregon Promise, so making sure that they have everything ready if, if they do decide to go on to a college or university um, trade school, that they have that financial piece done with, because as we know, things have deadlines and they can't go back and repeat if they don't get them filled out in time. We also look at the application process for what students want to do, when are the applications due, um, is there a fee for the application, and helping them fill out those applications, and also the scholarships, giving them, them the list of scholarships, access to the document that lists the scholarships on there, and keeping them informed on what's coming up for scholarships. Also with 12th graders, um, we use a career uh, our senior checklist and what the senior checklist does is goes month by month through their 12th grade year. So it will tell the mentor things that are going on in September, October, November. So when they meet with those students in September, they have the list, the mentor has the list in front of them and says, oh, you know, Ms. Monroe's going on a college visit in um, on the end of the month and she's going to this college, you should talk to her about that. So I try to give the mentors as much, much information as I can 
about what is going on each month and what are the dates of activities going on. That way the mentor has that information, can give it to the students, um, and then they can mark down that, hey, I gave this student this information, and then, then when it comes to the next month, hey, there's another list of things that we need to be doing this month. That way it doesn't overwhelm the students as well. We know that 12th grade year can be um, quite overwhelming for a lot of students. And if we try to give them the whole year at one time, uh, some of them may just, you know, stop. Like, it's too overwhelming for me and I'm going to stop. So giving them little pieces at a time to be working on, talking about your letters of recommendation, helping them um, type up the cover letter, finish their activities chart, and then role playing. How am I going to ask a teacher for a letter of recommendation? So going through the role pay is this is how you would ask the person for a letter of a recommendation. That way they feel a little bit more comfortable because they've been with their mentor or they've been in the Aspire program that they feel comfortable um, going over that with someone uh, who will critique them in a good way as well. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, how I make appointments with students or how uh, students make appointment um, with Aspire. So students make appointment by, with Aspire by coming to the Aspire desk and, and asking me for an appointment, emailing me. Or at the desk, I have a two weeks worth of dates and what mentor will be at, at Aspire um, and can, is open for appointments during that time so students can sign up that way. What has really worked for the Hermiston High School since I've been there is including the teachers in with the appointments. So when a student makes an appointment, I email um, on their appointment calendar to the student and the teacher a week be before the appointment. So I use the calendar and I let the student um, and the teacher know that um, the student has an appointment with their Aspire mentor and if this interferes with class activity, uh, please let me know so I can, can reschedule with the mentor and the student. And this has worked great because some of the teachers will say, you know, we have a test this day. Um, can you meet later in this class period or can you find another class period? So um, it works really well with me knowing what's going on with students um, and, and teachers. Um, are great about even suggesting students that need um, that should be working with Aspire. Also at the end of each one of the um, appointments with the students uh, the mentor does a homework form. So we started this a couple years ago where uh, the form we will tell the student just write down a little bit like this is what we did during this um, meeting and what I would like done before our next meeting. So you, if it's a senior, you can say, I would like you to um, have your FSA ID done with your parents or uh, letters of recommendation handed out to the teachers. So you can give them a list so when they come back, they will say, okay, you know, did what did you get done? What didn't you get done with that? And we all know that, you know, just telling somebody, hey, can you make sure to have this done and I'll see you in two weeks? Sometimes as soon as they walk out the door, they completely forget what you just talked about. But having that form in hand when they leave that they can refer back to has worked really well for us. Also, um, try to make an appointment with that student before they leave your area. So if a student is meeting with a mentor before they actually get dismissed back to class, they have them come back up to the Aspire desk where I can make their next appointment. That's even if it's a freshman. So if a freshman comes in and meets in October, then I, you know, will make an appointment for them that would be middle of January and I'll put it in my calendar book and I'll actually write it on their homework assignment page, their form, saying it has space on it that says my next appointment is and I'll say January, you know, 2021. Um, so students make the appointments before they leave. Um, and I find that, that helps them to know to come back. So we meet with sometimes seniors are every week towards the end of their senior year. We're meeting with them every week. And as many of you probably know that your mentors get really booked up. So the students need to make sure they, they're keeping track of um, their time with their mentor and making those appointments. 
Um, we have found that it works well starting with ninth, ninth graders and working through. We feel like we have um, a better connection with the students if we start with them um, as early as we can. I don't feel like uh, if they come into 12th, 12th grade, um, and it's January, I feel like there's a lot of catching up to do to learn more about the students. So I really like when we can get them as ninth graders. And our program has worked uh, really well for us uh, doing it that way and, and staying on, on top of the appointments. Um, and it's just, you know, some ideas that maybe you can try if you're looking for something new to try with your, your mentoring program. Um, thank you for your time.